Hey everybody, it's Charles from HumbleMechanic.com. Today, we're doing a bottom end inspection on the white Wookiee. All right, so this is sort of a combination of a couple of different videos that I've done. Uh, we're gonna be checking out the Eurowise engine mount to mount the VR6 onto the stand. That's awesome because then it allows us to do the timing chains and everything without having to like awkwardly work around the engine stand. It's also gonna give us the opportunity to pull the oil pan and pull the oil pump, do our inspection, see what the bottom end looks like, as well as pull the bearings for the connecting rods and take a look at those. And depending on what we find, we may have to go deeper, we may not, it really all depends. So with that, let's not waste any more time. Let's get into it. We got the new bolts here for the mount, four bolts and four washers. What this does, This mounts up just like that. There's actually six holes that you can mount it in. I worry about threading into these. Let's run a couple bolts in and see how it does. Yeah, that's a little unhappy. If I had a tap or a thread chaser, I would go ahead and clean these bolt holes out, but I don't have any of that here at the house. So uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and run them in just using these four. And since that's what holds the engine into the car, partly anyway, I think we'll be just fine with that. Now this, uh, this Eurowise mount is really cool. This is the powder coated version. I think going forward, they're actually going to be only by special order. If you want them powder coated, they're gonna send them raw. That way, you know, you can save a couple bucks by not having it powder coated, as well as uh, paint them however you want. Get them a little bit faster too. All right, snug these up. All righty, make sure we're nice and tight. And that's basically what it looks like. Just fits on right like that, nice and easy. When it comes to Allen head bolts, if you're worried about the integrity inside the bolt, one thing you can do is take the tool, try and get it lined up, and just give it a couple of taps, and that should seat it all the way and help you, uh, help you avoid rounding it out. Grab a magnetic tray so we can keep our bolts organized. Um, man, the Sonic Toolkit is working out really well. It's working out really well. I've been really pleased with it. Uh, it's got, gosh, I haven't ran really into anything that I, I felt like I didn't have in there that I, that I needed. Obviously a toolbox is very rarely ever completely complete, completely complete, but it's nice to have almost everything I'll ever need as in a, in a toolbox, especially at the house. Uh, Phil, I sold the cabbie. I sold the cabbie earlier this year. I sold it for a couple of reasons. One, I was kind of bored of the project. Two, it freed up money for the GTI, which is a far more drivable car than that one was. Even though I really like that car and I, I enjoyed driving it, it didn't have a top, so it was like a perfect weather only car. So, it, you know, I was kind of bummed, but it went to a good home. Uh, uh, a fella is going to be rehabbing it with his son which is pretty cool. Now we're gonna go ahead and try and pry this oil pan off. There we go. Whoa. All right, no metal shavings in the pan. That's good. This is a 12 valve. I'm just shine a flashlight down here. See what it looks like. There's a dead moth of some kind in the block. That's cool. You can definitely tell this engine was not super well maintained. There's a lot of crusty uh, carbon buildup inside of here. 
I'm going to definitely want to make sure I clean that out. Um, you know, I hadn't really planned on doing any bottom end work, and I still may not, but as I look at this, I really want to get this carbon buildup out of here. Since we're here, let's go ahead and pull the oil pump off and take a look at that. That's one, an area that is definitely going to want to be cleaned. You don't want to run any risk of having this carbon getting all in your freshly refreshed engine. Hate to see engines like this where you can basically tell it, it wasn't really abused, but boy, she could have been better maintained. Uh, what's my all-time favorite Volkswagen? Man, I... You know, I've been asked similar questions to that a lot, and I always have a really crappy answer for it because I have, like, the worst car fan ADD, I feel like, out of anyone ever. And uh, <laughs> so, like, my favorite right now is this exact one because I'm working on it, and that's fun. You know, I've never really been an air-cooled guy, despite the fact that I'd really like to be. I think air cooled are awesome. Love to do a square back at some point. All right. A couple of things I'm going to be looking at on the pump, not only for debris, but there's a rod inside of the pump that connects, connects the gear. This is the rod that connects the gear that's driven by the chain to the actual oil pump. And what I want to make sure is that it's not all flattened out or anything like that. So yeah, you know what, it, it may, it may just get replaced. We can pull this pump apart and do a really good inspection on it. Either way, it's gonna get decarboned and, yeah, there's some good sludge down at the bottom of that. The good thing is the engine ran without issue minus Minus the head gasket problem, but clearly, clearly uh, not well maintained. I'm going to just chuck all this stuff into a plastic bag. This is what a lot of, a lot of inside the block looks like. So we're just going to put this up for now. We're not ready to go back together with it yet anyway. So there's no point in really stressing about that. All right, now that we have the oil pan off and the oil pump removed, we have access to all the main caps as well as the connecting rods. And what I really wanna do here is take the caps off each one of the connecting rods and inspect the bearings. In addition to that, I also have new bolts to install. Typically when doing this kind of work on internals of an engine, most of these bolts are gonna be torqued to yield. And what that means is we tighten them down in stages. So for example, you would tighten it to say 50 Newton meters, and then you would do another quarter turn. In that quarter turn, the bolt will actually stretch out a little bit, and that applies the proper torque for whatever component you're tightening. A couple of things that I like to do whenever I'm doing this kind of work is I like to mark and label as many things as I possibly can. In this case, you really can't over label these components, but it's so important to make sure that they go back exactly where they came from. Now we're going to be doing one of these at a time, but I still think it's worth taking the extra minute or two to make sure that everything's labeled appropriately. And what I like to do is I like to draw an arrow with a paint marker towards the front of the engine, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes a better arrow than other times. In addition to that, I like to put one mark down the side to make sure that it's not possible that they get installed incorrectly. As far as the tools go, you can use hand tools here or you can simply use uh, impact. I, I like to use a little bit of both. It really depends on how tight some of these components are. These are gonna be pretty tight, so we'll go ahead and use a ratchet for it. It's also typically the case that you wanna loosen these in stages. So a little on the left side, a little on the right side. Now that they're started, I'm gonna just go ahead and run them out with an impact. Now an old trick is to actually take these bolts 
and rock them back and forth a little bit to remove the connecting rod cap. So I'm gonna take this cap off, I'm gonna wipe some of the oil off and do a really good inspection on this bearing. What I'm looking for here is any scoring, any grooves. You can see a tiny bit of the coating is starting to wear off. Not really a bad sign. We're gonna keep going. I'll make the determination on whether I'm gonna put bearings or not in it after we have more of them inspected. And I'm also gonna go ahead and inspect the underside as well. This is where a flashlight comes in handy to get in there and do a good inspection and see what our bearings look like. Everybody looks pretty happy down there. What I'll also do is I'll also inspect the crank journal where the connecting rods go. You can see this tiny little hole right here. That's an oil galley. We'll clean this off. Look for any signs of scoring. Basically, we're looking for any damage where maybe the engine was starved for oil or debris got in it, something like that. So our bearing looks good down there. Now, if I were seeing any kind of damage here on the, uh, the journal or in the bearings, I would probably go ahead, pull the pistons out and um, do a really thorough inspection and of course, uh, replace, <laughs> replace any damaged parts. I'm also gonna take a little bit of engine oil and just coat this. It's gonna be a while before the engine goes back together. I wanna make sure everybody stays nice and lubricated. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put this cap back on. That way I don't run the risk of getting it out of place, losing it, <laughs> or the piston falling out as I rotate the engine around to do the other ones. But what I'm not gonna do is I'm not gonna properly torque it because like I said, I have new bolts to, uh, to install for this. So I just basically want them snug to make sure that I don't run into any issues. From there, we just keep going on to the next one. So just like I did before, I'm gonna clean it. I'm gonna wipe one side down really well. Not a bad idea to hit this with a little bit of brake clean to make sure that it's not only clean, but it's dry so that our paint sticks a little bit better to it. And now you may notice like a piece of lint falling or something like that. All this stuff is gonna get cleaned multiple times before going back together. So there's no need to worry about any of that stuff being in it. You may also notice all this black gook on the block. That's all carbon buildup from poor, a poor maintenance history on this vehicle. I haven't exactly figured out what I'm gonna do about that. It goes pretty high up in the block. And my whole goal with this was to, uh, to not have to pull the, uh, the pistons, pull the crankshaft, and, and everything, and really strip the bottom end of the engine down. If I was gonna strip the bottom end of the engine down, it wouldn't be a problem. I would just go ahead and send it to the machine shop, have it hot tanked, and have them clean it for me. But since we're trying to avoid that, we're doing this on a little bit of a budget and on a little bit of a time frame. We're just gonna keep rocking and rolling. But if it comes down to it and that's what needs to happen, then we'll go from there. I don't mind doing it, I just would prefer not to. Again, clean any oil. We're looking for scoring, grooves, anything you can catch with your nail. Any of that kind of stuff is what we're looking for here. Sign of the bearing spinning. Typically you'll see damage on the edges. That's usually where it starts, but these all look pretty good. Check the journal as well. You know, one other thing I forgot to mention I'm looking for too, in addition to scoring and things like that. We're also looking for discoloration. We're looking for places where it turned blue. That means it got really, really hot and had a problem. So there's a tiny little hot spot on this bearing. I don't feel any damage. It may just be a little weird discoloration. So I'm gonna take a little more thorough look at the crankshaft. I'm gonna look down in the oil galley Make sure it's not clogged. Everything looks good. No, no bad scoring, no bluing, no hot spotting. Just kind of a weird little mark. When we go back together officially, I'll probably use some assembly lube. So that's basically it. That's, I'm gonna go ahead and keep rolling on this. I'm gonna do this for each and every connecting rod. Depending on what I find there will depend on what I do for the main bearings. Now the main bearings, for those of you guys that don't know, are the bearings that actually hold the crankshaft in the engine. 
The connecting rod bearings are the bearings for the connecting rods, uh, oddly enough, and that's what, uh, that's what is attached to the piston. Now, I'm marking these with arrows pointing towards the front of the engine. There's really no right or wrong way to do this. It's kind of whatever's best, whatever works best for you, your overall plan for the engine. If this were coming apart further, I might actually mark it differently than I am right now. It just really all depends. Pulled this one off and saw some unhappiness, realized that the bearing stayed <laughs> on the crankshaft, which worked out really good for me. Pretty happy about that. So again, these bearings look pretty good. The, the coating that's on them looks like it's just starting to wear. So I'm gonna, at this point, just keep jamming along with the intention of reusing the bearings unless I find something that I need to address. Get my light again. We look pretty good down there. Even though this engine was sort of poorly maintained, um, these engines are pretty tough. There's always the possibility that one place could have some unhappiness. That's why we're gonna go ahead and check all the connecting rods. From what I understand, especially on rebuilds and things like that, the connecting rod bolts are the weak link of these engines. Now, normally, I wouldn't rotate the engine back the other way, but that's only when the timing belt's on. Since we don't have any timing belt, timing chain on this one, it doesn't really matter which way we rotate it. And doing all this marking is probably a bit of overkill, like I mentioned, but I'd rather overmark it a little bit than not mark something and end up having a problem not getting something back together the right way. Well, I found one with a little bit of little bit of unhappiness. So let me wipe this one off so you guys can see this. See what I'm seeing here. See that kind of skid mark through the center of the bearing? There we go. Right through the center, there's a very tiny bit of groove. So I'm guessing since it's right down the middle that the oil galley since it's right down the middle, the oil galley on this cylinder may be a little bit clogged. So this one definitely is gonna take a little bit more inspection and we're gonna be a little bit more thorough because we found a problem. The other side of the bearing looks about the same. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my gloves off and I'm gonna take my gloves off. I'm gonna run my fingernail, my finger and fingernail down it, and if I feel, like I can feel the groove in it, uh, not in a good way, like you're listening to some good tunes, but actually feel metal missing, then it's definitely gonna be a problem. I am going to actually put that one back in, and I'm gonna keep going and inspect the rest, because what I wanna do is I wanna do a little bit more thorough inspection on the crankshaft as well, and make sure I don't have any scoring, any pits, Anything unhappy in the crankshaft. I'm do a really good look at this oil galley. Looks all right. I don't see any blockage or clogging. It's not blue. Make sure that's not a crack in the bearing. Nope, it looked like it was probably just a dog hair. So let's go ahead and put this one on, back on. Like I said, what I'll do is I'll inspect the rest of them and we'll come back to this one. And then to not mess with tradition, let's go ahead and just clean and label this one like we've done the rest. All right. Another one where we can see a little bit, little tiny bit of the coating's wearing off. Bottom looks about the same. 
You know, if we were looking to build a five or 600 horsepower engine, this wouldn't even be happening. We, uh, we wouldn't, I wouldn't have spent any of the time cleaning the tops of the pistons, cleaning that combustion uh, area. I would just straight be taking it all apart, sending it to the machine shop, having it rehoned, having new bearings put in it, all that fun, fun engine-y, rebuild -y stuff. But since we're just basically going for an engine refresh rather than a full engine rebuild, this feels like the right moves. All right, and one more. All right, here's our last one. Let's go ahead and mark it. All right, thankfully this one looks pretty good. Again, just a tiny bit of that coating. Looks like it's wearing off. Some of what you're seeing here is sort of odd lighting and reflection. So that may actually look a little worse than it actually is, but I think this one's gonna be just fine. Let's uh, check the rod side, see how it looks. This one's got a couple of spots on it that look like hot spots. Again, we'll inspect the crankshaft. She looks pretty good. All right, now that we have went and inspected all the rest of them, let's come back to this one that didn't look so happy. I also went ahead and pulled one main bearing cap with the thrust washers, just to take a look and make sure everybody was happy there. Let's go ahead and pull that back off and do a little bit more thorough inspection. So remember, this is also the one that the bearing stuck to the uh, crankshaft. So the more I look at this, the more I evaluate this spot of unhappiness, I don't think I can in good faith and good conscience <laughs> Uh, put this back in the car. So unfortunately, guys, guess what this means? New bearing time, which also means a whole slew of other things that I really didn't plan on. But this is one of those opportunities that it's easier, cheaper, and overall going to be better to go ahead and take care of it now rather than wait until we really have a super serious, unhappy, sad Charles with maybe a spun bearing or debris blown through the, uh, the entire engine. So while I'm not thrilled, I'm not happy, it, uh, it is what it is, as they say, because it can't really be anything else. Now it's time to just move on, make a plan to uh, do the next steps, and we'll, uh, you know what, we're gonna get it taken care of. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up there. I'm really not happy about what we found in the VR6, but you know what, that's part of it. That is why we do these inspections. That's why it's so important to go through step-by-step step and do full inspections on each and every component. So what happens now? Well, now the crankshaft comes out, now the pistons come out, we send the block to the machine shop to get tanked uh, and cleaned. We're gonna rehone each cylinder, put a new fresh hone on it. We're gonna put new rings on it, new bearings, New bolts, all that fun stuff. But the great thing is now I don't have to worry about any of that carbon crap down in where the, um, in the oil sump, any of that stuff. The unfortunate part is I wasted all that time cleaning the top end and in the combustion chamber. But look, it's part of it. Again, that's why it's so important to do all these inspections now versus when you're trying to figure out what connecting rod broke and shot through the block. So it is, as they say, what it is, even though I really hate that saying and I'm just I'm that we got to go this route. But the great thing again for you guys is that we get to go deeper and you get to see all this stuff 
another, another round of videos, another ton of videos. So it's gonna work out really good in the end. Overall, I'm gonna have a better engine, a better product, but it just puts everything back a little bit further than I had planned. So I'm gonna wrap it up. If you guys have questions, comments, you know what to do. Hey, if you like this video, please, please, for this video especially, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube. I always appreciate that. You guys can also subscribe right here on YouTube or over on the blog at humblemechanic.com. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, Snapchat. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. And with that kind of news, it warrants a drink of the day, a big boy gin and tonic, because frankly, I really am bummed about this.